After her administration in the South Asian nation collapsed on Monday, the Indian government granted former Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina an interim stay, according to media sources. As Hasina seeks asylum in the UK, India will provide full logistical support during this time, according to news media. Her move to Britain is still pending, thus her stay in India is only authorized temporarily. Traveling through India to London, Hasina tendered her resignation on Monday, amid historic demonstrations against the government. As of now, there has been no confirmation from the UK government regarding the grant of political asylum for the former Bangladesh Prime Minister, news media reported. Hasina is currently seeking asylum in the UK, with her sister Rahana, a UK citizen, accompanying her. Indian government sources are monitoring Dhaka's developments, with Bangladesh Army Chief General Wakar Uzizaman stating Hasina has resigned and an interim government is taking over. The Army Chief said he had met political leaders, and told them the army would take over responsibility for law and order. More than 100 people have been killed in the protests against the Hasina government over the last two days. A Memorandum of Understanding Mao, to cooperate on the local maintenance of Scorpion-class submarines, is about to be finalized between Brazil and India. Through this strategic alliance, India's naval capabilities will be strengthened by taking advantage of Brazil's vast experience in submarine maintenance. Vice Admiral Sandeep Nithani, Chief of Material and a high-level Brazilian delegation, led by the commander of the Brazilian Navy and the commander of the armed forces, recently had discussions about this crucial area of naval cooperation. Brazil's established track record in this field presents India with an exclusive opportunity to strengthen its submarine maintenance capacity. The foundation for the collaboration was established in 2022 during a historic visit by a delegation of Brazilian sailors. Vice Admiral Liberal Enio Zanilato led the mission, which carried out in-depth examinations of the Scorpion-class submarine building project at Mazagon Dock Shipbuilders Limited MDL, in Mumbai. This first-hand knowledge of India's skill in producing submarines strengthened the two countries' developing alliance. India and Brazil hope to improve their respective levels of naval readiness by combining their resources and expertise. It is anticipated that the partnership will have a major positive impact on regional security throughout the Indian Ocean and beyond. Following the 1962 war with China, the last multilateral exercise in India involving many foreign air forces was called Exercise Shiksha in 1963. The USA, UK, and Australian air forces were involved in that one. For Turung Shakti, the IAF extended an invitation to 51 friendly foreign countries. In its briefing, chaired by Air Marshal A.P. Singh, Vice Chief of Air Staff, the IAF explained that the focus was on enhancing mutual understanding of air power, realistic operations, strengthening military ties, and showcasing indigenous defense equipment. Tarang Shakti was earlier planned to be held in late 2023, but had been deferred and now the exercise is planned in two phases. Phase 1 will be held at AF Station Solar near Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu, in India's southern peninsula from 6 to August 14, 2024. The participants will be the air forces of Germany, France, Spain, and the UK. After a two-week break, the slightly larger Phase 2 will be at AF Station Jodhpur, Rajasthan from August 29 to September 14, 2024. It will include Australia, Bangladesh, Singapore, Greece, UAE, and the USA along with 18 countries as observers. Tarang Shakti will showcase the IAF in India more broadly. The IAF will learn and share best practices with the leading visiting air arms, making this a win-win for all involved. With the Defense Acquisition Program Administration DAPA announcing the start of production on Wednesday, South Korea's ambitious aerospace project, the KF-21 fighter jet, has advanced significantly. This significant accomplishment represents a major leap in the nation's defense capabilities and its goal of aviation self-reliance. The aircraft's maker, Korea Aerospace Industries KAI, with headquarters in Seishin, South Korea, hosted a celebration for this historic occasion. The assembly of the KF-21's first production model was celebrated during the ceremony, which was a monument to the engineers' and technicians' unwavering work ethic. The KF-21 program has been a cornerstone of South Korea's long-term strategy to modernize its air force. This initiative reflects the country's commitment to reducing dependence on foreign-made military equipment and fostering a robust domestic defense industry. 
KAI secured a $1.96 trillion contract with DAPA for 20 KF-21 units by 2027, with a long-term goal to expand the fleet to 120 by 2032. The KF-21's first production model is set to be delivered to the Air Force in late 2026, following rigorous flight and armament trials. Unintentionally, the growing demand for 155mm artillery shells from European countries has turned India's private sector into a massive industrial powerhouse. In order to meet the increasing demand for this essential munition around the world, domestic enterprises who were previously solely focused on exporting empty shells have greatly increased their production. India's capacity to make 155mm shells is expected to increase significantly. By the fiscal year 2027, it is anticipated that the private sector alone will generate more than 3 lakh shells yearly. This astounding number highlights the explosive growth of the domestic industry, as it does not include the results of projects in the public sector. The large number of orders coming in from European nations is directly responsible for the increase in production capacity. Indian producers have stepped up to fill the hole left by these countries' prolonged conflict as they struggle to refill their depleting ammunition inventories. This unforeseen demand has strengthened the ecosystem of the supply chain, while also increasing local output. In addition to meeting India's domestic needs, the expanded production will also leave extra for exporting. This excess manufacturing capacity strengthens India's position as a major force in the world ammunition market and increases its influence both strategically and economically. In light of the disturbance in Bangladesh, Meghalaya's deputy chief minister, Prestone Tinsong, announced on Monday that the state administration has chosen to implement a curfew along the international border. According to him, the curfew will be in place along more than 444 kilometers of the boundary stretch and will run every day from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. until further notice. The decision was made in a hastily convened meeting involving Meghalaya Police and Border Security Force (BSF) officers. Tinsong stated, the state government has decided to impose a night curfew along the international border with Bangladesh due to the volatile situation. In response to the events in the neighboring nation, the BSF has declared a high alert throughout all of its formations along the 4,096 kilometers India-Bangladesh border, according to officials. That's all from YKS team for now. If you like the information, then please do share and give a like. You can also become our channel member and support our work. Thanks for watching.